Well, hey friends, really good to have you back. Excited this week to just continue on this study of just becoming the person that God made you to be. And I know, you know, we just wanna be who God made us to be. And so today we're gonna talk about the spiritual fruit of faithfulness. Now faithfulness, you know the word, I think you understand the concept, right? The first part of the word is faith and faith is just complete trust or confidence in someone or something, right? Like if I have faith in somebody, then I trust them, I have confidence in them. But faithfulness is a little different, right? Like faith is just, do I trust you? Yeah. Faithfulness is now living your life in accordance with that truth. So yeah, I trust that you're a good driver, Faithfulness is now putting my life in your hands and expecting you to get me from one place to another. And so the opposite of faithfulness, I think that you know this, it's one of my least favorite words, is what it means to be unfaithful. To say, I trust you and I'm gonna commit my life to you and then to miss the mark, to fail. That's what the Bible calls sin. That's literally, sin is to miss the mark. If there's a target and you're aiming at something, you're like, uh, yes, I believe, and yes, I'm gonna do that with my life. I'm gonna be faithful. I'm gonna have good relationships. I'm gonna trust God at his word. Anytime I miss what I'm called to do, that's called sin. The opposite of faithfulness is called sin. That's why for when I get around young people, they have kind of two questions all the time. Number one, they're asking, Hey, Matt, I just need to know, is this a sin? Is blank a sin? What I'm doing with my boyfriend, what I'm doing with my girlfriend, and what I'm doing financially, is this a sin? What they're really asking is, is there some kind of list somewhere that would tell me that what I'm doing is bad? Well, here's what faithfulness is. Faithfulness says, that's the wrong question. Faithfulness says, I, you were made for a purpose. Are you hitting the mark of what you were made? Are you becoming the person that God made you to be? And is this getting in the way or is it helping you become, right? Second question is, okay, so if, 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 if these are the things that are getting me off track and keeping me from becoming the person that God created me to be, then how do I stop? Like, cause here's the thing, it's one thing to have faith, it's a whole nother thing to be faithful. Being faithful is hard. Not missing the mark is hard. And so what we're gonna do today is we just wanna dive in. Paul, would you give us some wisdom on how to be faithful? How do we allow the Holy Spirit to prompt in us the desire to be faithful? So Paul dives us in in Colossians chapter three, starting in verse three, and he just says this. He says, since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, set your mind on the things above, not on earthly things, for you died. And your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. So Romans would kind of say it like this, um, good news, because you're now in Christ, there's, no, there's now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Like if you've put your faith in Christ, received him as both Savior and Lord, then listen, you need to know that you're no longer in the position you were in. You might still sin, but now you're a son, now you're a daughter, now you're covered by his blood, now you are forgiven. Good, he's like, you got that? Like, I just want you to know, like, you've been seated. I want you to pull your minds up to where you are really now. You are a son, you're a daughter. Then Paul says, now let's talk about your becoming. Let's talk about your, your transformation. Because what he knows is, is that as we are pulled into, when, when we're immediately given grace, when we're immediately pulled up to be the sons and daughters, where I, wouldn't it be nice? We're not instantly transformed. Now begins the work of transformation. Now begun, begins the time where we start to go, okay, if God has, if, if I've put my faith in you, if you're asking me to be faithful, and if you now see me as faithful, even when I'm not, then Father, how do I then just walk in what you made me for? And so Paul goes on and says, well, let me help you with that, right? So verse five, he says this, he says, so here's what you have to do. You're gonna have to put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. That word nature is literally just the word flesh. It's a Greek word, sarx. So whatever beget, belongs to your flesh, like if you just let flesh do what flesh does, um, here's what it looks like. It looks like sexual immorality, looks like impurity, lust, evil, desires and greed, which is basically idolatry. 
He says, listen, because of these things, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life that you once lived, but now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these. So he gives a list. He said, here's what you gotta get rid of. Here's what we're gonna be putting to death. You're gonna be putting to death anger and rage and malice and slander, filthy language from your lips. It's like, listen, you're not gonna be able to lie to each other anymore. Since, remember, you're now seated somewhere else, since you've taken off your old self with its practices and you're putting on, this is what we're gonna help you do, we're gonna help you put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge of it, the image of its creator. He just says, here, listen, here, there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised, uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free. Um, I, here's what he says, I don't care who you are. Um, if you're found in Christ, you're in Christ and Christ is in all. So what Paul wants to do for us really, really cleanly and really precisely, he wants to say, listen, I understand how hard it is to walk into a season where you start becoming a faithful person. Like one of the biggest challenges in my life, um, this is Romans 7, this is a lot of the Bible, um, is not not, um, having faith. The biggest challenge in my life is being faithful. It's knowing what God's calling me to do. And at the same time, it's like Romans, it's like, I, I don't know, like, I know what I'm supposed to do. I just don't know why I don't do it. The Bible says, like a dog returns to his own vomit. So one man returns to his sin. I don't know why we do what we do. And so Paul says, hey, listen, I understand. Paul says, listen, I'm, remember, I'm the one that said, I'm the chief, I'm a chief of sinners. I understand what it's like to not be able to do the thing you know you wanna do. I know what it's like to have faith and somehow not be faithful. And so Paul does this beautiful thing as he says, so let's, let, let me give you something that's really gonna help. And, it, and this is so helpful for me. He says, let me, let me, and, and this imagery should be coming to your mind, let me talk to you about putting the old you to death. It sounds a little, putting people to death sounds a little weird, but the reason he's saying that is because he's trying to pull in your mind the clearest picture of Jesus and where, where was death most prominent in the life of Jesus? That's what he's trying to get you to. It's the cross. So say, listen, I want you, I want you in your life to start putting some things to death. And the reason he called to that is because he's calling you to have a picture of the cross. Well, what's the picture of the cross? Well, the picture of the cross, the cross is the clearest picture of what sin wants to do to you. So for example, on that day, and I think you know, and I don't love going through these details because I love Jesus, but on that day, on that day, Jesus went through six unjust trials. On that day, People who should have stood up for him didn't stand up for him. People that should have stood by him didn't stand by him, they, they left him. On that day, he was beaten, 40 lashes. He was struck in the face, he was beaten with rods. He was forced to carry a cross that he didn't deserve on a pretty long, long journey through the city. You ought to go to Israel someday and go on the way of the cross. But on that journey, he was spit on, he was shamed. He was then marched up on a hill. He was raised up. He was naked. He was, was, was being ridiculed. And he just says, listen, if you want a pure pure picture of what the sin in your life that you're still holding on to wants to do in your life, that's what sin does. Sin wants to separate you. Sin wants to cause you shame. Sin wants to give you rejection. Sin wants you to look like that. That is what Jesus demonstrated on the cross is what sin wants to do to all of us. And he says, listen, I need you to know like what we're talking about, when we're talking about your sin, the distance between faith and faithfulness, when we're talking about your sin, we are talking about something, every drop of sin in your life is a cancer and the only way to get rid of it is like Jesus to just put it to death. But the cross wasn't just the clearest picture, right? Of what sin wants to do to you. The cross is also the clearest picture 
of how to conquer sin so that you can be, if, listen, if, if the cross was the end, we're all in trouble. But the picture of the cross is also the clearest picture of how to conquer sin so you can be resurrected like Jesus. He just says, hey, listen, I want you to lean into the, to the picture of the cross because I want you to, under, to understand how terrible sin is in your life. You don't want a shred of it, put it all to death. But I also want you to know that if you'll put it to death, you too can f have a resurrected, power-filled life like Jesus. I think that's why Jesus, three and a half years into his relationship with the disciples, when he was trying to teach them like the mature things, now you didn't say this right out of the gate. He said after he knew them for a long time, he just said to them up in Caesarea Philippi in the, one of the darkest places and he was getting ready to leave and he wanted them to understand this, this thing called faith and faithfulness. He said to them, listen, whoever wants to be my disciple, here's how it works. You're gonna have to deny them, they're gonna deny themselves, they're gonna take up their cross daily and follow me. For listen, whoever wants to save their life, they're gonna lose it. But whoever loses their life for me, they're gonna save it. He says, listen, what good is it for a, someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self? Paul says, listen, first of all, no shame. You've been forgiven, you're seated at the right hand, he sees you as a son. Second thing, let's be honest. You wanna walk in the fruit of faithfulness, then you are gonna have to soak in the cross and you're gonna have to start putting some stuff to death in your life. Being serious about the sin that's holding you down and, and not just kind of saying, well, you know, I, grace covers me, so I think I'll be fine, but just saying, no, 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 no. Jesus, by the power of your spirit, Romans 8, help me put these things to death. Because when we pick up our cross daily and follow him, that is when Holy Spirit comes inside of us and we start becoming faithful people who walk with the spiritual fruit of faithfulness.